Hello students, this is Nita Shetty, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, AJIT Mangalore. So today's session, the concept is non-recursive predictive parsing and recursive descent parser. So in previous session, we have already started with the parser classification. So I had explained the classification of parser. So this was a classification of parser. The parser is classified into two types, that is top-down parser and bottom-up parser. Top-down parser is further divided into two types. One is top-down parser with the full backtracking. One more top-down parser without backtracking. Under without backtracking, it is further classified into two types, recursive descent parser and non-recursive descent parser. So LL1 is a non-recursive descent parser. So under bottom-up parser, two types, that is operator precedence parser and left recursive LR parser. Under LR parser, four category, LR0, SLR1, CLR1, LALR1. So we are going to study all different categories of parser. So, but in my previous session, I had started with the LL1 parser. So uh, before that, see the TDP is divided into two types, full backtracking and without backtracking. So what is backtracking? Backtracking means it can come to the next node and if it is not matching, it can go back to the previous node. So that is backtracking. Okay, but this is not, it, it cannot go back. That is without backtracking we are doing. Okay, so here in TDP without backtracking, so what the parsing can do, it do is it can uh, predict the next coming node. Okay, so it can predict the next production. Okay, so the, this doesn't need any backtracking. So it can predict the next production. So this TDP without backtracking is known as predictive parser. Students, please remember here TDP without backtracking parser is also known as predictive parser. Whereas TDP with the full backtracking means with the, we cannot predict the next production. So this is known as non-predictive parser. Okay. So here full backtracking which is if you go backtracking it is known as non-predictive. Without backtracking means uh, it is predictive parser. So I can say this uh, is a predictive parser. Predictive parser is classified into two types. Predictive recursive descent parser and predictive non-recursive descent parser. Okay. So predictive recursive descent parser and predictive non-recursive descent parser. So we had already started with the non-recursive descent parser. It is what type of parser it is? It is a predictive parser. Okay. And one more name for uh, uh, predictive non-recursive descent parser is also known as table-driven parser. Okay. It is also known as table-driven parser. So please remember the different names. So TDP without backtracking is known as what? It is a predictive parser. So predictive parser is classified in two types. Predictive recursive descent parser and uh, descent parser and Predictive non-recursive descent parser. Predictive non-recursive descent parser is also known as table-driven parser. Why? Because uh, we have already constructed a parsing table. So, it is based on the table. So, we call it as a table-driven parser. Okay. Predictive recursive descent parser is also known as what? It is also known as table-driven parser. So, today we are going to study non-recursive predictive parser that is LL1 parser. We have already constructed with the parsing table. We are studying the continuation of that. And one more we are studying a recursive descent parser. So, it is, all, it is also known as what? Pre uh, predictive recursive descent parser. So, first let us begin with this concept that is non-recursive predictive parser. See, non-recursive predicting parser is also known as what I told. It is also known as LL1 parser. Okay. So, it is also known as LL1 parser. And in my previous session, I have told what is the meaning of LL1, right? So, first tell means what? It is left to right. Okay. That means we are scanning the input from left to right. Second L, 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 L means it follows left to most deviation. And one means what? Mm. Uh, that, uh, it is a number of character, okay, which we can, uh, I mean, uh, look ahead character. So, we, uh, how many characters we are seeing for time, uh, for one time, okay, that means we are seeing each character, so we call it as a one, n, okay, one. So, l n one parser. Now, what are the different uh, components in LL1 parser? Okay, so LL1 parser needs input where the input characters will be stored and input always at till end with the dollar. Remember this, okay? And it needs stack, okay? Stack contains last symbol of the stack is always dollar. Remember, 
okay and a predictive parsing program okay and it it needs a parsing table so the last session we have solved so many problems and we now we know how to construct a parsing table so to construct the parsing table we should know two functions that is first function and the follow function and finally we will get the output so if you know this four concept it's very easy to study this non recursive predictive parser okay so this was a problem where we discussed the construct ln1 parsing table for the given grammar so same uh, problem we have discussed in the previous session so the question is e gives e plus t bar t t gives t star f bar f f gives id okay this was a given grammar and we have construct the parsing table okay but my previous session question was just to construct ln1 parsing table okay but here just observe the question so after constructing a parsing table you need to parse the string the given string is id plus id star id Okay, so here not only constructing the table, after constructing the table, we need to parse the string id plus id star id. So, remember students, okay. So, in order to parse the string, first we need to construct what? We need to construct the parsing table. Okay, now, so before constructing the parsing table, we should see whether this is a left recursive grammar or we should check whether it needs left factoring. But here the given grammar is a left recursive. Why? Because the right hand side, so leftmost variable is same as uh, left hand side's variable. So it needs what? It needs uh, uh, elimination of left recursion. So after eliminating left, left, uh, left recursion, we will get to e gives t e dash e dash gives plus t dash bar epsilon here t gives uh, t gives f t dash t dash gives star f t dash bar epsilon and f gives e bar id so say previously i clearly explained how we are getting this okay so once again here i'm not explaining this just follow my previous uh, session videos okay okay now so this is a grammar after eliminating the left recursion now after eliminating the left recursion, so we can construct a parsing table. But before constructing parsing table, we should know what? We should know first function and follow function. So this also clearly explained first function and follow function. Now just look at the first function. Now what is first of E? So first of A is first of T. First of T is first of F. First of F is what are the terms left is going to generate? Open bracket comma ID. Okay, now first of E. What is first of E again? Same. Uh, sorry, first of E dash is a plus comma epsilon. First of T is first of F. First of F is open bracket comma ID. And first of T dash is star comma epsilon. And what is first of F open bracket comma ID? Okay, so now similarly calculate the follow function. What is the follow of E? Okay, so see whether E is present the right hand side is after E what is for which terminal is for following? Closing parenthesis is following and E is a starting symbol. So we should put dollar. So dollar comma closing parenthesis. So follow of E dash see here right hand side E dash is present in two place and after E dash nothing is following. Nothing is following means follow of left hand side. So follow of left hand side variable means follow of E. Follow of is dollar comma of closing parenthesis right follow of uh, again here also same thing follow of e dash next to follow of t follow of t where is t here, here so after t e dash is following so we should uh, find first of e dash so what is first of e dash plus plus but we cannot put epsilon so replace e dash by epsilon so there is nothing okay so what we should put it is nothing but to follow of uh, follow of e Okay, see here, after t, e dash is following, so we should find first of e dash, first of e dash is plus comma epsilon. So, we are putting plus here, we cannot put epsilon in the follow, so we should replace this uh, e dash by epsilon. So, what is follow of t now? Nothing, so it is a follow of left hand side variable. What is a follow of e? Follow of e is dollar and closing parenthesis, okay? So, here also same thing, okay, after t, same thing. Now, what is follow of t dash? So, where is t dash? t dash is present here, after t dash, nothing, so follow of t dash is follow of t so what is follow of t follow of t is plus dollar and closing parenthesis and uh, t, same here follow of t dash is nothing follow of t dash and finally follow of f so where is f here here so well, who is following f t dash so follow uh, first of t dash is what star and here you should put epsilon so follow of f becomes nothing so follow of t left hand side variable so it is plus dollar closing parenthesis so after star plus dollar closing parenthesis so this is how we are calculating first and follow function.
no so once we construct uh, once we calculate first and follow so now you can construct uh, now you can go for construction of passing table and also this uh, explanation same table i explained in my previous session so how to construct the passing table here so here all the variables and here all the terminals but here you cannot put epsilon you should put dollar remember so next what you are seeing look at the first production e gives t e, t e dash so here you should find what is which variable is here so t so it is a variable so you should find all of that variable uh, sorry first of that variable so what is first of t so first of t is open parenthesis comma id so under open parenthesis and id under open parenthesis and id you are writing that expression at, at that production e gives t dash right so what is your second production second production is e dash gives plus t dash comma epsilon so here plus and uh, here you can put plus so under plus you can write the um, production e dash gives plus t dash so here under plus you can write e dash gives plus t dash but uh, there is another production e dash gives epsilon so what you should do so when there is an epsilon uh, so you, 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 when there is an epsilon uh, you can put that production in under follow of left hand side variable right so what is left hand with the left hand side variable e dash so what is follow of e dash dollar and closing parenthesis so under dollar and closing parenthesis you can place the production e dash gives epsilon right so what is the third production t gives f t dash so first of f is uh, closing parenthesis and id so under closing parenthesis and id uh, see here you can put t and f t dash t gives f t dash t gives f t dash so what is your fourth production t dash gives star f t dash comma epsilon so under star you can put that production so under star you can put this production and see here t dash gives star f t dash but where to put the epsilon okay so follow of t dash that is plus the dollar and closing parenthesis so under plus dollar and closing parenthesis you can put this production and f so what is f here open bracket comma id so open bracket comma id will place this production open bracket and uh, uh, id you can place this production okay so uh, f gives id you are writing uh, in the id okay so because i uh, f gives id you're placing in id and f gives e you are writing here f gives e you are writing in this place okay so this is it hope this uh, students this is clear and we have already explained in this in previous session okay now now uh, the given question was construct the passing table and they asked you to construct the i mean they asked you to construct id plus id star id so this was a given string so we need to pass the string using the passing table so this is a passing table so now let's see how to pass the given string okay see here what you should do is so what is this id plus id star id so this is a given input right so uh, draw one table so here uh, draw the four columns here it's a matched string star input and action okay now so what is your input in input i'm writing id plus id star id and always i told in the this figure see here always the input should end with the dollar and your stack should begin with the dollar okay or stack it should begin with a dollar as well as a starting symbol remember okay stack should begin with a dollar and starting symbol so what i'm doing here look at here input id plus id star id i'm ending with the dollar and stack it should have dollar okay and or, that means uh, bottom of the stack it should always remember bottom of, bottom of the stack it should contain dollar then a starting symbol so what is the starting symbol of the grammar e right so i'm placing st in stack and placing a starting symbol e okay hope this is clear so and stack it should contain dollar okay even input also should end with the dollar input given input question was id plus id star id and stack it, sh it should contain a starting symbol so starting symbol is e okay now now let's begin parsing now how to parse so see here so what the stack contains now starting symbol right e now what is the input so look at the first character i mean the first uh, uh, terminal okay of the input okay so what does your input contain id okay so now what you should do is go to the parsing table see when what the what production whether e gives id see here e and id what is the production e gives t dash so that means you should replace that e by t e dash in the stack okay when e e gives id okay only when when the production is e is replaced by t dash so in stack i am replacing this e by 
te dash okay in stack i'm replacing this e by te dash why because in my table when e gives id the production is e gives te dash okay so i'm replacing e by te dash okay now input is same id plus id star id dollar okay so what i what i did here i'm re, I, I just replaced e by te dash okay now now what is what are your stack uh, top of the stack contain t t right okay and what is your input contain id okay now t gives id okay when t and id so when t and id is matching so what is the production t should be replaced by ft dash so here i am replacing this t by ft dash okay i am replacing this t by ft dash so ft dash e dash dollar and this input remains same id plus id star id so what i did here i replaced this t by ft dash okay so now what is the next production f and id okay so now f and id see here f and id so what you are replacing this f by id so what i'm doing here i'm i'm replacing this f by id okay i'm replacing this f by id so t dash remains same e dash remains same and dollar remains same okay so now id plus id star id okay what i did here i replaced this f by id okay now now see here what your top of the stack contain top of the stack contain id and what is the first input string it is id so whether it is matching yes when it is matching so you got a matched one so matched one is id and next you should cancel that match string so here id should, you should cancel here so here also you should cancel id so when i cancel id i am getting t dash e dash dollar and i in input i have cancelled this id so what i am getting plus id star id dot id dollar okay hope students this is clear always remember when the top of the stack and input string matches you need to cancel that string okay so this id and id is getting cancelled and i am getting matched one is id okay so here match one is id okay now now so when i cancel this i'm i'm getting t dash e dash dollar here plus id star id dollar okay now t dash and plus so see here t dash and plus so when t dash and plus what is the production t dash gives epsilon so epsilon epsilon means you need to replace that t dash by none nothing okay so i'm replacing t dash by nothing means I, I i'm just eliminating that okay i'm just vanishing that t dash okay so after if t dash uh, gets vanished so i'm getting e dash and dollar and string remains same input string remains same so that is plus id star id dollar okay now e dash gives plus okay so see here e dash gives plus so e dash gives plus means what e dash gives plus so e dash gives plus means you are replacing e dash by plus t e dash okay so here uh, i am replacing this e dash by what plus t e dash okay i am replacing e dash by plus t e dash dollar and what your inputs contain plus id star id dollar okay so what i did here i replaced this e dash by plus t e dash so now what happens see here top of the stack is plus and input string is also plus so there is a matching string okay so now your match string till here it was id 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 now id plus so when there is a match string you should eliminate that plus plus so after eliminating i am getting t e dash dollar here i am getting id star id dollar okay here i am getting t e dash dollar here i am getting id star id dollar okay now t gives id okay now when t gives id when t gives id what okay when t gives id you should replace that t by ft dash so you are replacing this t by ft dash okay you are replacing this t by ft dash e dash dollar okay ft dash e dash dollar here id star id dollar okay now f gives id okay now see here when f gives id you are replacing that, as that f by id so i am replacing that f by id so when i replace that f by id i can write id t dash e dash dollar here id star id dollar so now whether i am getting a match string yes i am getting id and id so when i get id and id what i should do i need to cancel so it's a matched id i am cancelling that id so i am getting t dash e dash dollar here i am getting star id dollar here i am getting what star id dollar okay i am getting now what is the match string till here it was id plus now i am getting id plus id okay so next here top of the stack is t dash and input string is star 
Okay, now listen. T dash and star. So T dash and star means you should represent T dash by star F T dash. So I'm uh, representing the T dash by here. Star F T dash and E dash dollar. This is star I D dollar. So now whether I'm getting a mass string is star and star. Okay, I'm getting a mass string. Now it was I D plus I D star. Okay, so when I get star star, I should cancel it. Okay, so now I'm getting what F T dash E dash. Here I cancel the star I D dollar. Now F gives I D. F gives ID means I'm replacing that F by ID. ID T dash E dash dollar here ID dollar. Okay. So now again I'm getting what match string? I'm getting ID plus star ID. Okay. I'm getting ID here ID ID I cancelled. So T dash E dash dollar. Okay. So now let's continue. Actually we got the input string ID plus ID star ID. So I'll let me continue it. So T dash and dollar. So T dash and dollar. So T uh, replace T dash by epsilon. Okay, I am replacing T dash by epsilon means I am vanishing this T dash. So I'm, now I am getting E dash dollar dollar. Okay, so here E dash and dollar E dash and dollar E dash replaced by epsilon. So I am just replacing getting dollar dollar. So you need to continue until you get dollar dollar. Okay, so the string is I D plus star I D. Okay, students, hope this is uh, very simple. Hope it is clear. So here you should remember uh, the important thing. Uh, you know, stack uh, should it should contain always dollar and input should end with the dollar and first year the stack will contain top of the stack will contain the starting symbol e okay so then you will be uh, comparing that uh, stack and input and you will be looking at the parsing table and you're replacing the production based on that parsing table and when you get the match string we need to cancel that match string okay we need to cancel that match string so this is very simple and uh, here the question was uh, Parse the given string. So we have parsed the given string and we got that id plus id star id. Okay. So now, so here in this grammar, so since this is an LL1 grammar, so we uh, without any, uh, I mean without any error, so we have parsed the string. Okay. Now, if we are parsing table contains two production, then it is an error. Okay. And obviously we are giving a conclusion that that is not an LL1 grammar. Okay. But uh, what is that? Uh, so if there is a two uh, production in a single place, then it's impossible to parse the given string. Right. So we call that as an error. Okay. So what is an error? So let's discuss about error recovery. Okay. So now consider the string open bracket id star plus id okay uh, so now say uh, same grammar i mean same table so table is same we have already used this table for the previous uh, string also now for the same table we need to parse the string the string is open bracket id star plus id now let's begin okay so first what your, your input will be open bracket id star plus id it will end with the dollar and what your stack contains dollar and starting symbol what is the starting symbol e right okay now what i should see e and closing parenthesis are you getting so stack i should see what the stack contains e input contains open bracket i should see e and uh, closing parent not open closing parenthesis okay now e and closing par is there anything no right so then what is this there is no error in the parsing table but we cannot parse the given string okay again this also we call it as an error okay students see here for the given string is uh, closing parenthesis id star plus id so let's begin parsing so parsing means i first i should put stack i should put e on the stack now i'll be comparing e and closing parenthesis when i compare e and closing parenthesis there is no data i don't know what to do here okay so we call this as an error okay so here we are studying error recovery uh, error recovery recovery mechanism okay when you get such type of error so you cannot say your input is wrong okay your input is this you need to parse it okay so this is a type of error okay so next we are studying how to uh, rectify this as a, how to overcome this error okay how to overcome from this problem okay so that concept we call it as an error recovery mechanism okay so error recovery me mechanism in parsing table error recovery in parsing table okay now so basically here there are two types of error recovery mechanism here there are two types of error recovery mechanism they are 
panic mode error recovery and phase level error recovery so these are the two types of error recovery mechanism okay panic mode error recovery and phase level error recovery okay now first we'll begin with first one panic mode error recovery what is this panic mode error recovery now listen okay now for the same grammar uh, when i started parsing okay so i got uh, e, I, I, I mean uh, e okay so i should get the production for e and closing parenthesis right so e and closing parenthesis so there is no production so now this is an error in a problem so what solution i can give one solution what i can do is uh, eliminate that closing parenthesis from the input okay one solution i can give is eliminate the terminal okay this is the terminal right input means it contain terminal so eliminate the terminal from the input string that is one suggestion or one solution i can give second solution of what i can give us pop the variable from the stack pop the variable from the stack okay and third suggestion what i can give us introduce new non terminal by which that terminal can be produced okay introduce new terminal to the stack so that a new production can be produced okay uh, introduce new terminal uh, non terminal so that a terminal can be produced so but this is not uh, a valid one okay i cannot do this third one okay but this two possibilities i can do okay but this is a suggestion i'm giving but this is actually reality it cannot be implemented okay okay so this is not a valid suggestion but this two suggestions are valid okay so when i can go for this three suggestions when there is a variable and when there is a terminal okay when i map it there is no production then it is an error recovery there are two category panic mode and phase level under panic mode what suggestion i can give is either eliminate the terminal from the input string or pop the uh, variable from the stack and third suggestion is introduce new variable so that you can produce a terminal but third suggestion is uh, don't go for third suggestion it is not a valid suggestion but this two valid uh, two suggestions we can work on it okay so pop the non non terminal from the stack or remove or discard the terminal from the input now let's uh, look at with an example how we can do this okay so pop the non terminal from the stack or remove or discard the terminal from input okay so to do this in order to implement this we need to do some modification for the parsing table in order to in order to do this okay in order to either to pop the non terminal from the stack or to remove discard the uh, terminal from the input so we will be modifying the parsing table okay so now what modification we should do for the parsing table so i'll go back to same parsing table so this was a parsing table and same grammar i'm explaining with the same example i'm explaining so our grammar was e gives t e dash e dash gives plus t dash bar epsilon t gives f t dash t dash gives star f t dash f gives i d and e same grammar okay so for the same grammar okay we have already construct the parsing table but in panic mode error recovery we are little modifying this parsing table okay and uh, see we uh, this is the first of all the uh, variable and this is a for loop so once again i'm not explaining so many times i explained how to calculate first time for loop okay now let's see what modification i am doing okay now go to the parsing table so this is a parsing table okay see uh, look at the first row e okay and look at the terminal id plus star closing parenthesis open parenthesis closing parenthesis and dollar okay now when e gives id we know this is a production okay because e gives t dash first of t first of f first of f id and open parenthesis so under id and open parenthesis we have already placed this okay so this we no confusion under id we have to place e gives t dash and under open parenthesis we have to place this e gives t dash here there is no confusion okay now Uh, a confusion was when e gives closing parenthesis there was nothing right so previously we were in this problem okay for this when e gives closing there was nothing so this was a problem okay so now what i'm doing here is uh, look at the each terminal 
okay c when e gives id you have u e gives t dash and when e gives uh, closing par open parenthesis we have the production e gives t dash but when e gives plus or when e gives star or when e gives closing parenthesis or when e gives dollar we don't know what to do there there is no production so now what the uh, solution we can give here is in panic mode see here when e gives plus when e gives plus so just to check whether that plus is there in fall of e okay see in when e gives plus okay just to check whether the plus is present in fall of e so when e gives us in e what is the fall of e dollar and closing parenthesis so dollar and closing parenthesis uh, so here there is no terminal plus here there is no star right here there is no plus here there is no star so the meaning of that is so there is no plus and no star there, right so that uh, what i'm doing here is under plus and star i'm just eliminating that uh, input plus and star so i'm i'm leaving it none okay so when i find plus and star there is nothing i'm just eliminating it are you getting this so under plus and star so here i'm leaving it blank the meaning is i'm just eliminating this plus and star okay but here under dollar and closing parenthesis follow is present in follow we have dollar and closing parenthesis so under dollar and closing parenthesis what i'm doing is see we have two suggestion right what is the first one either remove or discard the terminal from the input okay remove or discard the terminal from input so for plus and star i followed that okay i removed that terminal from the input okay but that uh, closing parenthesis dollar is present in follow so for that what i am doing is i am popping the non terminal from the stack okay pop non terminal from the stack so pop non terminal from the stack okay so pop i am writing as a sink okay you can write here pop no problem we can write here what pop here also you can write pop popping the what is the meaning pop the variable from the stack okay or you can write sync sync means uh, it's a famous pop okay sync short form synchronize s y n c h okay sync okay say remember when the terminal is present in this follow uh, there we are writing pop pop or sync if the terminal is not present in follow the meaning is we are eliminating okay so you can write eliminate you can write here eliminate or eliminate or you leave it black both are same Okay, you can write eliminate, eliminate, or leave it blank. No issues. Okay, so students, hope this is clear. Under ID and uh, open parenthesis, there is no confusion. We got e gives t dash, e gives t dash. Okay, here there was no confusion. And the ter left or terminal was was plus star closing parenthesis and dollar. Okay. Under dollar and closing parenthesis, since it is present in follow, and what I'm writing is pop the non-terminal from the stack. So instead of writing pop, I'm writing sync. No issues, both are same. Okay, you can write pop. Or here also you can write pop, or you can write sync and sync. No problem. Okay, and plus and star is not there. So it's actually what I'm doing is I'm eliminating that the terminals. Okay, it is eliminate or eliminate or leave it blank. Okay, now look at the second production. When e dash gives plus. When e dash gives plus, we have the production e gives plus t dash, and closing parenthesis we have e, e gives absolute. Here, here also we have uh, e gives absolute, right? So sorry, this should be e dash gives absolute. Make a correction over here. So this should be e dash gives absolute. So same uh, same table. Uh, e dash gives absolute. E dash gives absolute. Okay. So here also same thing. E dash gives epsilon. Okay. Uh, this is e, this is not e gives epsilon. E dash gives epsilon. Here also e dash gives epsilon. So for this plus uh, closing parenthesis and the dollar, we don't have any problem. This is e dash gives epsilon. E dash gives epsilon. Okay. This is e gives plus t dash. Okay. Now the left or terminal is which one? Id and star. Okay. Now see. Look at your follow. In follow, whether that id and star is present? No. If it is not present, what is the meaning? We are eliminating the terminal. So here also it is eliminate. Here also here it is eliminate. Okay, and the close open parenthesis is also not there, right? Open parenthesis is also not there. So here I am writing it as an eliminate or leave it blank. Here I left blank. So here also it is blank. So here it is also blank. No issues. Okay. Now 
look at your third production and look at your third production t gives ft dash in t gives ft dash uh, under id we have the production t gives ft dash and then open parenthesis we have the production t gives ft dash so left of terminus is plus star closing parenthesis and dollar okay now look at your fall of t plus dollar and closing parenthesis so under plus dollar closing parenthesis under plus dollar closing parenthesis we can write pop 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 or you can write sing 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 okay what is the meaning so we are popping the terminal from the stack or we are synchronizing so we are writing sync sync and sync okay and see here in follow of t there is no star right so what is the meaning i am eliminating the star i am eliminating the star okay so now in t dash look at here in t dash uh, uh, okay what is the production t dash gives star ft dash bar epsilon t dash gives star ft dash bar epsilon here uh, under plus we have uh, we have the production t dash gives epsilon under star we have the production t dash gives star ft dash and under the closing parenthesis we have the production t dash gives epsilon under dollar we have the production t dash gives epsilon so what is the left out one id and uh, open parenthesis id and open parenthesis so now just check whether the t dash contains id and open parenthesis so there is no id and open parenthesis in follow right see here the follow contains only plus dollar and closing but there is no id and open parenthesis so what is the meaning i should eliminate id and open parenthesis or so you can write eliminate or you can leave it blank so here i have left out blank okay so now last terminal is f Okay, so what is a F? Uh, now under ID we have F use ID. Under open parenthesis you have F use I E. Okay, but but what is the left terminal plus star closing parenthesis and dollar? Okay, now look at your follow plus star yes. Plus star dollar and open parenthesis there, right? So under plus, under star, under open parenthesis, and under dollar, you can write sync. Sync means what? Pop the uh, non terminal from the stack. Okay, so you can write sync or you can write the pop. You have written sync, 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 and sync. So here, please remember uh, in panic mode error recovery, you are modifying your passing table. Uh, if that terminal is not present in the for loop, then we are eliminating. Eliminate means we are leaving in blank. If the terminal is present in a for loop, what is the meaning? We are popping that a variable from the stack. You can write pop or you can write sync. Both are sync. Okay, so we got here sync sync. Here you got sync sync sync. So here also you got sync. Here also you got sync. Here also closing dollar. We wrote sync. Okay, or you, instead of sync, please remember you can write pop. Okay, here you can uh, here you can write eliminate. Okay, that means we are eliminating, or you can leave it blank, or you can write scan. Okay, scan means also eliminate. Okay, so remember you can write scan, or you can leave it blank like this, or you can write eliminate. Okay, here instead of sync, you can you can write what. Uh, a pop both are same okay now we have modified the passing table okay now let me take an example okay same example uh parse the given string open bracket id star plus id open bracket id star plus id okay see here uh, in input i'm pl placing open bracket id star plus id now e okay so without panic mode recovery can i pass this string without panic mode recovery can i pass this okay so here open bracket and e open bracket e we cannot pass right see this was a passing table previously we discussed so it gives open bracket id means e gives open uh, closing parenthesis or not open closing parenthesis and e so there is no uh, production so this was a confusion right but in panic mode recovery i have modified the passing table so after modification uh, i'm getting the passing table as this uh, so after modification we are getting this parsing table now with this parsing table you can parse any type of string okay you can parse any type of string so let's begin parsing this string using the modified parsing table so this is a modified parsing table and students please remember this is not e gives epsilon e gives epsilon this is e dash gives epsilon here also e dash gives epsilon this 
sky contains E. Okay, uh, see, uh, I already explained in the previous example stack input, and uh, this is optional remark. So, stack uh, your input should end with the dollar. Okay, I told already the input should, uh, should end with the dollar. So, what is the input? Closing parenthesis id star plus id dollar. Okay, closing parenthesis id star plus id dollar. And what your stack contain? Stack contain always at the uh, bottom of the stack. So it should end with the dollar. And uh, uh, I told uh, initially your stack contains starting symbol. So what is the starting symbol? E. Right? E. Okay. Now let's begin passing the string using this table. So what is the starting? E gives closing parenthesis. Look at your table. When E gives uh, closing parenthesis. So, E gives closing parenthesis. What is the meaning I told? Pop. Po pop what? What you are popping? You should pop the variable from the stack. Right? You should pop the variable. Variable means non-terminal. You should pop the non-terminal from the stack. So, what I should do here? Uh, what is the variable E? So, I should pop that E from the stack. Okay, so if I then pop that stack, uh, E, okay, so here I get only dollar, right? So, now, since I told your stack always, it should, when you're starting your stack, always it should contain E. So, can I pop it now? See, actually, according when I refer this table, I have to pop, okay? But since this is a starting symbol, I cannot pop. Okay, so in other cases, you have to pop the variable. But since E is a starting variable here, okay, I mean, we are beginning here. See, if it is here, we, you can pop the key. But since we are beginning or passing, so we cannot pop. So, we cannot pop means what is the next option? Either we need to pop the variable from the stack or we should eliminate the terminal from the string. Okay, so well, I am going for the second option. Let me eliminate the terminal from the input. Okay, so... So, we will pop that uh, open bracket first input uh, from first uh, string from the input that is open bracket. So, we, when we uh, eliminate that open bracket, so the remaining string is id star plus id dollar. Okay. So, it is id star plus id dollar. So, what does stack contain? Stack contains e and dollar now. Okay. Actually, students, please remember when there is e and open parenthesis, look at the uh, table. e and open parenthesis sync. Sync means it is pop. Actually, what we should do is we need to pop that variable from the stack. Okay. We need to pop that variable from the stack. Okay. Actually, we should eliminate that e from the stack. But uh, we know that uh, uh, the starting, uh, doing passing, uh, the your starting symbol must be there in the, uh, in the stack. So, I am not doing that. So, what is one more action? One more action is terminating the, I mean, eliminating the uh, terminal from the input. So, I just terminated that open bracket from the input. So, when I uh, terminate that open bracket, the remaining input is id star plus id dollar. Okay, so here uh, we just uh, skip that uh, open parenthesis. Okay, now what do your stack contains? Top of the stack contains E and what is the input? ID star plus ID dollar. ID star plus ID dollar. Okay, now when we pass string, E gives ID. So what your E gives? E, e ID means your E must be. Now see here, when non-variable is E, input symbol is ID, what the production? You, you may replace that E by T E dash plus, sorry, T E dash. So here, I just replace the production E by T E dash. Now, T E dash dollar. So if your string is what? ID star plus ID dollar. Okay, now, now you should check what T and ID. Okay, now T and ID. You have the production T should be replaced by FT dash. So, here I am replacing T by FT dash. So, FT dash E dash dollar. FT dash E dash dollar. Here ID star plus ID dollar. So, now when F gives ID, when F gives I, when F and ID mapping is F must be replaced by ID. So, I am replacing F by ID. Okay, I am replacing that F by ID. So, here I am getting ID T dash E dash dollar ID star plus ID dollar. Okay, now ID, see top of the stack and input, starting symbol of the input is matching, right? ID and ID is matching. So, we need to eliminate that ID. So, the remaining stack contains what? T dash E dash dollar. 
yes star plus id dollar okay so i have already told during parsing when it is matching we need to eliminate that uh, string matching string so when here i'll be uh, eliminating id so remaining is t dash e dash dollar yes star plus id dollar okay now now we should match what t star and star t dash and star okay now t dash and star so t dash and star what see here t dash and star so we should replace by t dash by star f t dash so here i'm replacing the t dash by star f t dash so star f t dash e dash dollar here it is star plus id dollar now again star and star is matching so here i'm eliminating that star so i'm writing f t dash e dash dollar here plus id dollar Okay, now f and plus. See here, this is very important. See, f and plus. F and plus means sync, right? So sync means what I told. We need to uh, pop the variable from the stack. We need to pop the variable from the stack. So now, what is your top of the stack contain? F t dash e dash. Top of the stack is uh, top of the stack is f. So and actually now, what I should do? I need to eliminate that f from the stack. Okay, I need to pop it. I need to remove it. So if I remove that f, so your stack remains what now? T dash e dash dollar. Now your stack contains what? T dash e dash dollar. Are you getting the students? Actually, per sync means we need to pop. Actually, we have here we should pop, but the problem is since we're beginning, we cannot eliminate that a. So I did do one more action. Okay. So, but anymore we cannot do that. We need to follow the same rule. Okay. So here I replace that f by uh, I mean I pop the tf. So I'm getting t dash e dash dollar. Okay. Here I'm getting what t dash e dash and dollar. So now what your input contain? Input contain plus id and dollar. Okay. F has been popped. Okay. Now now see here t dash and plus okay go back to the table see t dash and plus so here when there is a t dash and plus you need to replace t dash by epsilon so i'm replacing the t dash by epsilon so i'm getting e dash e dash and plus id dollar okay so now e dash and plus okay so go back check e dash and plus means you need to replace that e dash so this should be e dash i told there's a mistake over here so this is e dash gives plus t dash e dash gives epsilon e dash gives epsilon okay this is not e e dash now when e dash gives plus you need to replace e dash by plus t dash okay so i'm replacing e, e dash by what i'm replacing e dash by plus t dash so i'm getting plus t dash dollar here plus id dollar again look at here top of the stack and input string is matching plus and plus is matching so we need to eliminate a plus so i'm getting what t e dash dollar here id and dollar okay now look at t and id so look at t and id when you look at t and id you are replacing t by f t dash so it is f t dash e dash dollar and id and dollar f t dash e dash dollar id dollar so now f and id so f and id means you are replacing uh, f by id look at your id t dash e dash dollar here it is id and dollar okay here i replace f by id so i'm getting id t dash e dash and dollar here id and dollar so again it is matching id and id is matching so we need to eliminate id so remaining is t dash e dash dollar and dollar so now we need to see the production uh, sorry top of the stack is t dash uh, and input is dollar so t dash and dollar t dash and dollar replace the t dash by epsilon so uh, when we replace the t dash by epsilon means it, the t dash gets vanished so remaining is e dash dollar dollar e dash and epsilon e dash and epsilon again replace that e dash by epsilon see this is e dash don't get confused this is not e this is d so when i replace that e dash by epsilon i am getting dollar so we reach dollar dollar so this is how we are eliminating i mean we are passing the string so there is a two action under the panic mode either you need to pop the variable from the stack or we need to eliminate the input string okay and when we need to eliminate the input string when it is black when we need to pop the uh, variable from the stack when there is a sync okay but here remember why here i actually uh, i should eliminate that e but since this is a first variable i cannot do that so i did one more action so but since this is a beginning i did anymore we cannot do it here okay uh, so this is how we are passing the given string so if we are passing table as, as a previous person table so this uh, finally we uh, result in an error because there was a no production for e and closing parenthesis so for this uh, the solution given was panic mode recovery and this is what we call zen panic mode recovery remember students panic mode recovery means two things uh, we are popping the non-terminal from the stack non-terminal is a variable and or we are removing the 
disc uh, they more discard the terminal from the input so third is not a valid it is not a valid suggestion since uh, uh, but that is one uh, uh, solution they given but we are following in first and second method and uh, this is an example for panic mode error recovery okay so since i told there are two types of error recovery one is a panic mode error recovery and second one is phase level error recovery okay second method is phase level error recovery now what is that phase level error recovery okay so this is also a type of error mechanism okay we'll see what is that so in phase level error recovery phase level error recovery so it is implemented by filling the blank entries in a predictive parsing table with the pointers to error routine okay so phase level error recovery is implemented by filling the blank entries in the predictive parsing table with the pointers to error routine okay so here uh, the blank space okay so here see this was a blank space right uh, so we were not knowing when e uh, when when we map e and play it was map, uh, blank okay there was nothing so when we pass where if we get that mapping then it resulted in a confusion right so they are telling the blank place must be i mean the blank entries must be replaced by the pointer which points to the error routing okay so this routing means it can contain okay it may change it may insert or it may delete the symbol on the input and it may issue the appropriate error message okay so it can do this type of action the change uh, change the input string or insert some new character the input string or delete the input string okay this way the action okay or the action was it might pop the uh, variable from the stack okay so in panic mode also we did same thing right either we pop the variable from the stack or we eliminate the string okay uh, here they're telling they can eliminate they can delete the symbol from the input string or they might insert some new variable into the i mean new terminal into the input string or they may change the input string at the same time they can pop the dead variable from the stack okay so alteration of the stack symbol or the pushing a new symbol on stack is a questionable but it is not easy it is a questionable okay so they we need to uh, during phase level recovery so we need to make, uh, remember two important points the first point is first one is the steps carried out by the parser might then uh, not correspond to the derivation of any word in the language at all okay so steps carried out by the parser might might then not correspond to the derivation of any word in the language Second one, we must ensure that there is no possibility of, we must, uh, we must ensure that it may not result in an infinite loop. Okay, if, we, if it will result in an infinite loop, then we cannot, it is not an error recovery mechanism. So, we need to remember first and second point. So, second point is, we must ensure that there is no possibility in the infinite loop. Okay, so checking that any recovery action eventually results in an input symbol being consumed and it is a good way to protect against the search loops okay so this is what phase level recovery so remember students in phase record also two suggestions they are given okay uh, one is they might pop the variable from the stack or they may do they may change the input string or they may add some new content to the input string or they may uh, delete the input string okay but uh, when doing that you need to remember very important point it may not result in the infinite loop okay so this was a suggestion uh, the error recovery mechanism panic mode error recovery and phrase level error recovery okay so here we discussed how to parse the uh, in given input string in ll1 parser right so here we studied how to parse the given input string so this is how to parse the given input string using ll1 parser so next we studied the uh, error recovery in the parsing table there are two error recovery panic mode error recovery and phrase level error recovery okay and we studied in panic mode the two methods either popping a non terminal from stack or removing the discard or terminal from the input and in phrase level we explained uh, uh, like uh, how what they are doing here also did the same thing but for the input string they will either delete the terminal or they might add new terminal or they might uh, change the terminal okay and uh, next one what we are discussing is recursive descent parser okay so in the classification i had given two types and a top down parser so I had given two categories. Now one is uh, I'll go back to the classification. 
so this was a classification given one is top down and bottom up parser so under top down parser two category one is a recursive descent parser one more is a non recursive parser descent parser so in that we st uh, studied non recursive descent parser and here uh, remember students i told uh, uh, we call this as in predictive entire thing as a predictive parser because we predict what is the next production future production so we call this as a pre predictive recursive descent parser or is also known as pre uh, predictive non recursive descent parser so now let's begin with the predictive recursive descent parser so what is the predictive recursive descent parser okay so before that what the what is the meaning of recursive okay so what's the meaning of recursive calling the function again and again right we have seen see in c program you know what is recursive function so calling the function again and again so here in grammar what is function Okay, so where the function comes, how we are writing the function for the given grammar. So, let me give one simple example. Okay, so before that, remember recursive means calling the function and again and again. So, here for a given grammar, for each variable, we need to write the function. Okay, in recursive descent parser, for each and every variable, the function has to be written. So, that is known as recursive descent parser. Okay, remember here for every variable a function is written, such type of parser is known as recursive descent parser. Okay, for every variable function has to be written, such type of parser is known as what? It is known as recursive descent parser. Okay, so now let's look at an example, a very small example I've given. So look at the grammar, E gives IE dash and E dash gives plus IE dash bar epsilon. Okay, so this is a given grammar, small grammar they have given. Okay, E gives I E dash. So one more production is E dash gives plus I dash, plus I E dash or epsilon. Okay, so this is a type of recursive descent parser. So I said for each variable we need to write the function. So here how many variables you can see? You can see two variables, right? One is E and one more is E dash. So for E and E dash we should write what? We need to write the function. Okay, now I am writing, I am writing the function definition for E. So E, look at here, function name is E. Okay, E is a function. Okay, and I am writing the body of the function here. If L is nothing but it is a look ahead variable L. Okay, so it is globally declared in the, which is globally declared. Okay, so remember L is a globally, global variable which is globally declared. So now I am telling here variable look ahead L variable if it is equal to I, then match I. Okay, the function what I am written is, uh, if look ahead, so this is simple example we're taking, okay, if L equal to I, then match I, okay, after that I am calling E dash, okay, so here remember L is what, it is a look ahead character, okay, and it is a, L is a get character, so it will increment to the next one, okay, so remember L is equal to get care, and later I am writing in a function, okay, L is equal to I, so if it matches it, okay, it is a match I, then I am calling E dash, okay, so this is a procedure, function definition for E, so there is a one more uh, E dash, one more variable E dash, so I need to write the function definition for E dash also, so one more function definition is, if look ahead is equal to plus if l equal to plus match l okay then again uh, match i then call e dash else return okay so here why i wrote this look at the production e gives i e dash e gives i dash so for this production i am writing a function are you getting for this production i am writing a function definition so function name is e variable name is i so, what is the first determinant? First character is i. So, if look ahead matches with i, match i. This is i, right? So, after i, what is there? After i, e dash. So, I am calling that e dash. Are you getting students? See here, e gives i e dash. Okay. So, here, if l look ahead matches with the i, if it matches with the i, match i, then call e dash function. So, this is a function definition for e. According to this grammar, I am writing this function definition. Okay, now there is a one more production, e dash gives plus i e dash bar epsilon. Okay, now what I should write e dash, what's the first one? If uh, look ahead is equal to plus, first character is plus, match plus. What is the next character? i. So, I am writing match i. Okay, what is next variable e dash? So, call that variable e dash, call the function e dash. 
okay so that that one condition is done one production is done one more production have else what else written okay why written because epsilon epsilon is nothing so if there is bar something here i should write so i i will get more than one if else statement or i can write it in a switch case also no issues okay here i can use a switch or i can write if else if else okay i can write anything okay students please uh, try to understand this how i wrote wrote this function so looking at the production i'm writing here okay first production is uh, uh, first terminal is plus i'm so i'm checking if look ahead is plus match plus next is what match i next i'm calling e dash okay so if it was plus i e what match plus match i then call e dash e okay here since is e dash so i'm writing e dash okay and here else i'm returning nothing that means it is absolute okay okay so next uh, uh, one more uh, function i should write for match because we are using match so it's a user defined okay so i'm writing match uh, character t okay that is a get character so um, when l matches with the variable that variable will be returned to a character t okay it will be returned to a variable uh, type character t okay so if l equal to t l equal to get character that means it will increment to the next one okay else print up error okay for the students this is clear l is equal to get care okay that means if l matches with a t then increment to the next one next uh, terminal okay next variable else a print of error okay so if match character t if l is equal to t um, increment to the next one otherwise print error okay and in main function what you are writing in main function uh, i am calling that e okay so in main function because why i am calling this because this is starting symbol i need to start the function with e starting symbol right so i am calling e okay and after parsing when we can tell that your uh, input uh, reached to the end of the string that means when you reach to the dollar so when a uh, look ahead this dollar you are printing a uh, par parsing is success okay so in main i am writing what is starting and what is end what is starting you are writing a starting function e and what is end when a look ahead reaches to the dollar okay so that means uh, uh, when you reach the end of the string end of the string means when you look ahead where character reaches to the dollar and your printing is passing is success hope students this is clear uh, how, how what is recursive descent parser recursive descent parser means for each variable in a given grammar we are writing what we are writing the function procedure we are writing a procedure so for e i wrote the procedure for e dash i wrote the procedure and match i use a different function so for that i should write a procedure and this is a main okay this i am writing main in main what i am writing is what is the starting symbol e and when i am reaching to the end that is l equal dollar that means i have reached the end of the string okay then we are printing success okay so here uh, since e gives i starting symbol is i match i okay then i'm e dash so i'm calling this e dash okay students hope this is clear so now let's take one example and uh, let me pass the uh, recursive descent parser using recursive descent parser let me pass the string okay so what is a uh, given grammar is i plus i e dollar very simple okay so you need to place this uh, in i uh, input string is i plus i and what is stack contain your stack contains dollar and what is your starting symbol it says this is a function we will start with the main okay so go to main go to e okay let's begin the uh, program let's press it okay main okay so now e go to e so where is the e now where is the e so e is here okay now first one look at whether look ahead character is i yes look at character is i match i okay match it next call e dash okay go to e dash next whether look at character is plus s next character is plus okay match plus okay next match i okay automatically it will increment right i told look ahead because get character automatically increment so next is plus i s plus i okay so next got uh, e dash okay go back now we reached there i plus i we reached here okay now go to e dash again call this function now is it uh, plus it is not plus if it is not plus return okay go back to return okay now when the look ahead dollar s yes, it is dollar then passing is success so this is very simple right so let me pass it once again so the my given input string is i plus i dollar and starting from main in main i'm calling function e so i'm going to e now look ahead is i yes, starting character is i uh, whether it's match or is yes, match i next i'm going to calling e dash is i'm going calling e dash 
okay i'm calling e dash now in e dash with the look ahead is plus s yes, look ahead is plus automatically l will increase because it is a get character so s yes, look ahead is plus okay now match plus so next is match i is it match i next is match i okay next again i'm calling e dash again i'm calling this now with the look ahead is plus no it is not plus if not plus all you need to return okay return means you go back okay so now we are in second line you did executed first line now you are in second line when now look ahead is a dollar yes look ahead is a dollar okay print passing is success so uh, your this grammar takes input string i plus i in dollar and we passed uh, then we uh, we the given input string was passed using recursive descent parser okay why the name is recursive descent parser because a function calls another function okay uh, why the recursive descent parser the function calls another function so the name is recursive descent parser and here we are writing the function definition for all the variable so the, the name is uh, recursive descent parser so students in this session we studied the three things all three topics are very important so first we passed the even input string using ll1 parser then we discussed about the error recovery then we discussed about the recursive descent parser we'll study about the bottom up parsing in my next session thank you